hello everyone welcome back to weeks ideas if you're new to this channel i'm walter and in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you how to populate interactive elements using velo on wix so right here i have three different types of elements such as a drop down checkbox group and a selection tag and these elements are populated with values from our collection so i'm going to share with you how to pull content or data from your collection and populate them in these elements and i'm also going to share with you how to make sure that you do not have duplicate values within these elements when you populate them now before we get right onto this tutorial please don't forget to smash that subscribe button give this video a thumbs up and also don't forget to turn on your bell notification to be the first to know of our future videos now let's jump right in now the first thing we're going to do is to check out these elements and the very first element we have here is the drop down so when you click on that you can see an option or a way for you to add a choice to this drop down so click on manage choices and over here you can see that you are able to edit or duplicate these options and when you click on this button you are able to add a choice or another option to this drop down and over here you can add multiple choices at a time as you can see all you need to do is just to head over to the next line and you can go ahead and add in item 2 when you click on save and head back to your choices you can see you have a new options right over here so what i want to show you is how you can add or populate these options directly from your collection and just before we get to that let's take a look at the multiple choices or the selection group element right here and when you click on that as well you can see we have the manage choices and here is just the same thing as we have on the drop down element and we can take this further and check out the selection tags as well and over here when you click on manage choices is also the same thing as we do on the drop down it's only missing the ability to add in multiple choices at a time but that is not going to prevent us from adding or pulling data from our collection and populating to these elements so now that we have all our elements in place the next thing we're going to do is to head over to the velo documentation and over here at the api references we're going to look for the elements which is the drop down elements so scroll all the way down until you get to the drop down and over here in the options click on that and as you can see wix already provided a way for us to add in the options and over here the option type is an array and over here at the chart properties we have the label and we have the value and what it says here for the label is this is what the user sees so when the visitor goes into your page and they click on this these are the labels and this is what the user sees and this can be different from the value same thing goes with the multiple checkbox group and also the same thing goes with the selection tags so over here we have the label and we also have the value and the value this is what you use in your code and this is what is stored in your collection so we're going to look for a way to pull in data and populate the label and also the value and over here you can see that we have a very simple process that we can use to set or get options in our drop down so over here we have a very simple example to get the list of options and the first options label and value from our drop down which is a very simple way for us to get the very first options using the index of the array and over here when we click on this drop down you can see how we can set the list of the options for our drop down and as you can see we are using an array which contains objects of different options so what we need to do is to find a way to get those data and also remove the any duplicates and also set them into an array as objects and each of these objects must contain a label and they must also contain a value and if you remember we said that the label is what the user sees and this is what the label says which says who's on first but the value is different from the label so that is perfectly normal and that is possible but what we're going to do here is to make our label and value the same data so let's head back to our website and let's get started on with this tutorial now we need to create a collection if you don't have one yet or don't know how to create a collection you can check out my last tutorial on understanding content management system and it's a full one hour video that is going to share with you everything you need to know about content management system which includes creating your collection getting data from your collection showing it to your users and also adding data to your collection then the next thing for us to do is to get on with our collection but before then let's head over to the dev mode and turn on dev mode 
now the dev mode is what allows you to write in code to your website and over here you can see that we have a tab that allows us to write in code for this particular page and it also gives us this velo sidebar that has more options for us to utilize the velo platform now once you have enabled that go ahead and minimize this tab and head over to this icon that says databases and click on that and over here you can see i already have a collection and i'm gonna go ahead and open up this collection by clicking on this icon and click on open collection now this is my collection and i have three fields for the cuisine type the dietary preference and then the tags so i'm going to pull in all of this content here and place in my drop down element and i'm going to pull in all this content and place in my checkbox group and I'm going to place all these tags into my selection tags. So if you have a very large collection and you have so many options, then this is a very easy way for you to simply populate your elements without having to manually add in your options. Now, just before we actually start to code in here, you can notice that right over here we have vegetarian. And if we copy these and paste it in our search, you can see we have multiple cases where we've called the vegetarian keyword but what we want to do is to make sure that we do not duplicate these in our options so we're going to use a special method to make sure that we do not get duplicate values so even though we have three values over here in the collection is going to return them as one and for the gluten free as well you can see that we have multiple cases where we've used it a couple of times now the same thing goes with the tags field so we need to use a special method to make sure that we do not get duplicate values so let's go ahead and close this right up and start to code now we're going to go ahead and hide our databases and over here go ahead and maximize your code panel the first thing we're going to do is to import the week's data because we're working with our database and our collection so i've gone ahead to import the week's data now the next thing we're going to do is to write a function that is going to help us to pull the data from our collection so we're going to go ahead and clear all of this i'm going to write a function and call this populate elements now this function is going to be a parametric function or it's going to be like a template function that we can reuse for different elements so here is what we're going to do this function is going to take in three parameters the first one is going to be the collection id the next is going to be the field id or the field that we're pulling the data from and next is going to be the element id so this is the element that we want to populate so inside of our function we're going to go ahead and use the wix data to query to query our collection so the collection we are querying is the collection id which we're going to define later on and then next i'm going to use the limit method to limit the number of data that we're going to pull in at a time now if you have so many contents in your database you can go ahead and limit the number of items that you want to pull in at a time for me, I'm going to leave mine at 100, but you can decide on what you want yours to be. Now, the next method I'm going to use is the ascending method. And the ascending method is going to make sure that every data that is being pulled in is arranged in ascending order or from A to Z. So the field that I'm pulling this data from is going to be the field ID. Now, I'm also going to specify this field ID later on, but we're going to go ahead and finish up with this populate elements function which is a parametric function or a template function. So next, we're going to go ahead and use a very important method called a distinct. Now, the distinct method is responsible for making sure that we do not have duplicate values. So even though I showed you earlier that we have some values that are repeated over time in our collection, it's going to see them as a single data. So go ahead and add in your field ID for that particular field. And then next is the dot .dem method. So after we have pulled in our data, we're going to go ahead and get the results. So instead of our .dot method parameter is going to take in the results, and what we're going to do next is to create a variable. Now this variable is going to be responsible for holding all our results, and we're going to go ahead and get your items that are in our results, and then we're going to map through those items. Now the reason for us mapping through these items is we're going to convert this into an array with objects. So let's go ahead and make sure that we use the map method properly. And we're going to have the element, and over here we're going to create. I'll return the label and the value for our element. So we're going to return in an object form. So it's going to create an object for each of the items that are returned and add them into an array. So our label is going to contain the elements and our value is also going to contain the elements. So now the distinct list now contains all the options from our collection and this is going to be dynamic for all our elements. So we're going to define the collection ID. We're also going to define the field ID or the field we're pulling data from. And we're also going to define the element that we want to assign these distinct values to. So now that we've gotten our data, the next thing we're going to do is to assign those data to our options. Go ahead and use the Wix element selector to select the element id which is right over here so go ahead and use this element id which we're going to indicate later on and then here we're going to say the options 
we want to populate the options using the distinct list. Now this is about it and I'm ready to start testing it out. Now remember that from our API reference here, we are assigning an array that contains object for these different options and what we have done with the map method is that it's going to create these objects automatically in this format so we don't have to manually add in the options. So now we're about to actually make use of this function. So go ahead and copy this function and then bring it just right outside of the function part and over here we're going to replace these errors that we see here. So the very first thing we need to replace is the collection ID. So go ahead and get rid of this collection ID and add the quotes. And over here in your databases, go ahead and open that up. And here on the database that you want to pull in the data from, go ahead and copy the collection ID. Once you've copied that, paste it right here. And then for the field ID, here is where you define the field that you want to get the data from. So go ahead and click on this to expand the drop down. And the first option I want to use is the cuisine type. So copy the field ID and bring it right here. And finally, the last parameter that we need to add is the element ID. Now this can be gotten from your front end. So over here, you're going to go ahead and define the IDs for these elements. And when you click on this and expand your code, you can see that we have an ID here. So go ahead and replace yours to cuisine type or the name of the drop down or what it does. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this ID right over here. And I'm going to bring it over here and get rid of this error and add in my quotes and then add a hash and then the ID. Now this is going to help me to do this. It's going to go into the collection which we have defined here. Then it's going to filter through this cuisine type field ID, which is what we have also defined here. And it's going to get it in ascending order and make sure that we don't have any duplicates on that field. And then whatever data or value that we got is going to be mapped through and returned as an array containing object for different options and then added to or assigned to our cuisine type or drop down element. Now it's time to test this out. So let's go ahead and minimize this. And over here, let's go over to the manage choices. You can see that we have all these choices right here. But once we have updated this in our code, all these will be overwritten. So they'll be replaced with the new options from our database. So let's go ahead and preview this. All right, so I'm previewing this website and over here when you click on select, you can see that these are the options from our database. Now we're going to go ahead and test this out for our checkbox group and also for our tags. Now let's go back to editor and we're going to go over to this maximize. And all we need to do again for this is to copy this line and paste onto the next line for the next element. Now the next element is going to be for our checkbox group, which is right here. And we're going to go ahead and maximize this, copy the ID. And first of all, we're going to replace the ID here. And the field that I want to replace this with is going to be the dietary preferences. So copy the field ID and replace it right here. Now you can do the same thing as well for the tag. So copy this function again and place it on the next line. And the field I want to use to populate the tags is the tags field. So go ahead and replace the field ID here. And then for the elements, let's click on this. Now expand and copy this ID and replace the ID right over here. So just going to follow through what this function parameter, you know, says. The first thing you need to replace is the collection ID, which is this. Next is the field ID, which is the field you're filtering by. And next is the element ID. But make sure that you add this hash right over here just to make sure that that is the correct ID you're looking for. Now I'm going to go ahead and publish this and actually view this in the live site so we can have a proper look at how it looks like. All right, so I'm here on the live site and just before I refresh this page, I'm just going to share with you how the difference between, you know, what we have normally on the elements and what we have now. So go ahead and refresh. And when you do, it's going to actually show up with the default options on the elements before populating these elements. But right now you can see that we have distinct values. So these are unique values that we have in our collection. And you can go ahead and allow your site users to select these items and it will work just pretty fine. But what I want to do here most importantly is since we're populating data from our collection, we just need to get rid of all these options. So you can do that by deleting all of these one after the other. But if you have this option to add multiple choices, just go ahead and click on that and delete. And that will remove all the options from your drop down. Now let's do the same thing for our multiple choices or checkbox group. Head over to the add multiple choices and delete that as well. Now for the tags, we're also going to do the same thing. 
but since we don't have the add multiple choices at a time we're gonna go ahead and do the delete one at a time all right so i'm gonna head to delete all the options right here and uh, unfortunately we are not able to delete all the options we need to have at least one option showing up at a time and so what you can do is to just add a keyword like loading and that will show to the user that it's loading and they don't need to do anything so you need to copy this and then bring it to the value as well so the value can be anything but just want to unify these options and so the user will see loading when the page loads and then it's going to populate after the page is ready so let's go ahead and publish and then view this again all right so this is the live site and i'm going to go ahead and refresh so when i refresh you can see it shows loading before populating the items so this is how you populate interactive elements using velo on your wix website and also on your wix studio website so if you want to implement this method you want to add options to your elements dynamically then this is the way to do that i hope this tutorial was useful for you if it was please do leave a comment in the comment section and also please don't forget to subscribe this is going to be a massive help to this channel and it's going to get these videos across to every wixer around the world looking to add amazing features like this to their wix website Thank you very much and I will see you in the next tutorial.